Welcome to Nerdgasm, everyone. Today we're going to be going over the origin of Monel. Now, Monel has had a few different origins, but his most recent one before the events of the New 52 comes post Infinite Crisis. Monel's story actually starts with a young Clark Kent. Clark is thinking about his day and how he saved Lana Lang and her family from crashing into a tree after Lana's dad swerved to miss a stray dog. Even as a kid, Clark was saving people all around Smallville, but saving the day wasn't the best thing that happened to Clark that month. The week before Clark saved Lana's family, he was walking home from school, feeling bad because he couldn't play any games with his friends. The last time Clark tried to play some games, he broke his friend Pete's arm in three places. On his way home, he hears a boom coming from the sky. He flies up into the atmosphere and catches a spaceship, but a young Clark Kent wasn't enough to stop it completely. The ship and Clark both crash landed in a cornfield. When Clark looked up, he sees someone floating there. But not only floating, there's not a single scratch on him, and he's speaking Kryptonese. The first thing that Monel said to Clark was, son of Jarrell. And then eventually it turned out that Monel could even speak English. But unfortunately, Monel didn't have any of his memories. Monel goes with Clark to his cellar, where all of the Kryptonian stuff he has is kept. Monel notices something right away a flag that Clark's father left him, a flag with the symbol of the House of El. Everything was looking like Monel was Kryptonian, and now Clark would finally have a sort of brother, someone that's just like him. Monel gets a ham and cheese sandwich from Clark's mom while Clark talks to his father about Monel. Clark tries to tell his dad that all the evidence points to Monel being a Kryptonian, and that Clark thinks that Monel might actually be Jorel's son. He might actually be Clark's real brother. While everyone is sitting at the dinner table, they realize that they don't even know the stranger's name. They decide to give him a name, and they take Mon from the calendar that was on the wall, and L from the House of L, officially naming him mon -El. Clark and mon -El have one of the most amazing weeks. Tuesday they rescued a riverboat. mon -El even got some training in how to use his powers, and used his heat vision to fix the boat. Wednesday, mon -El stopped a possible major freeway explosion. A truck carrying cars would have ended up crashing into an oil tanker. On Thursday, they stopped an out-of-control amusement park ride. I have no idea who made this ride. It was breathing fire and it had multiple heads. It was a child's nightmare. This is... I don't know who made that. And on Friday, the two of them played baseball using trees and boulders. Finally, Clark was able to use his strength to play sports. Clark was happy because Mono was the best brother he could ever ask for. The problem is, at night, Mono wasn't so easygoing. He was always having nightmares and screaming in Kryptonese. Monel said that the dreams were getting stronger and that it felt like a voice was telling him he doesn't belong on Earth or with Clark. Monel comes up with an idea to expose himself to Kryptonite. If Monel reacts to the Kryptonite, he can prove that he's Kryptonian and then his nightmares might finally stop. But when Clark opens up the vault to remove the Kryptonite, Monel begins to react to the lead box that holds the Kryptonite. As soon as Monel was affected, his memories came flooding back. It turned out that Monel was from Daxum. He was a seeker of forbidden lore. He had found a message from a rocket that had survived the explosion of Krypton, which we would later learn was actually Clark's rocket. And even though his people told him not to pursue this search, Monel couldn't resist. He tracked the path of the rocket to a planet called Earth and knew that he had to find the rocket. Monel left immediately and journeyed for three weeks to reach Earth, but his rocket passed through a sunspot storm that damaged the rocket's fuel cells. When he landed on Earth, his memories were gone and seeing Clark was the first thing he remembered. Monel tries to tell Clark that the lead box is making him sick. Lead to Daxamites is just as lethal as Kryptonite to Kryptonians. The problem is that once Monel was exposed to the lead, it was too late to do anything. The poison was irreversible. The only thing that Monel could think of to do was to have Clark use the Phantom Zone projector. In the Phantom Zone, time stands still so the poison wouldn't affect Monel. Monel knows that he probably would never come out of the Phantom Zone ever again, and he tells Clark that it's pretty much the only way for Monel to live. Clark has to send Monel to the Phantom Zone to save his life. As Monel was transported to the Phantom Zone, Clark told him that he would find a cure for him one day, even if it took a thousand years. Do you guys get it? A thousand years? The 30th century? The Legion of Superheroes? You guys get it. And now with Monel gone, Clark felt alone again, but he knows that it was better to have met Monel than to never have at all. Years later, when Clark had long been established as Superman, Monel called to Clark from the Phantom Zone. Clark, who was in the Fortress of Solitude, raced to the Phantom Zone window and saw that Monel was in a panic. He tells Clark that the Phantom Zone is being destroyed, it's disappearing, and Monel is going to disappear along with it. Monel tells Clark to let him out of the Phantom Zone. He knows that he's going to die from the lead poisoning, 
but he would rather die in the real world with his brother than die in the Phantom Zone as a Phantom. Superman gets him out at the last possible second, and immediately Monel starts dying from the lead poisoning. But Monel tells him that he's happy to be dying a man. Luckily for Monel, Superman wasn't gonna let his brother from another planet die. Superman has Lois watch Monel while he tries to use his Legion ring to travel to the future and find a cure for Monel. But of course, the Legion ring isn't working, making Superman realize that something's wrong with the future. But that has to be a problem for another time. Superman races to his lab, and with his super speed, he starts trying to create a cure for Monel. As he's exhausting everything he has, Superman notices a bottle labeled Monel Drink Me with the Legion symbol on it. He races back to Monel and gives him what's inside the bottle. He may not know what it is, but if it has the Legion symbol on it, then he knows that he can trust that it'll help Monel. Almost immediately, Monel wakes up and greets Cal, saying that it's good to be alive again. Whatever Brainiac 5 left Superman cured Monel's lead poisoning. With Monel finally back at full strength and back on Earth for the first time in decades, Cal asks him for a favor. He needs Monel to watch Metropolis for him while Cal goes into deep space on a mission to stop Zod. Monel stops in on Mrs. Kent to talk to her about what just happened and the fact that Cal asked Monel to basically be Superman while he's gone. Monel tells Mrs. Kent that he doesn't really know where he belongs after being trapped in the Phantom Zone for so long. Oracle's gonna create some papers for Monel and Cal put money in his bank account, but Monel still doesn't have a name for his Earth persona. Mrs. Kent decided that if Monel's gonna be a Kent, then he should use a name that no one's using. As Monel is moving into his new apartment, his new neighbor introduces herself, and he tells her that his name is Jonathan, Jonathan Kent. Monel has a pretty crazy destiny ahead of him in the present and in the future. But for now, this is the start of him being the protector of Metropolis until Superman returns. Even though Monel wasn't Kryptonian, Superman always regarded him as a brother. And in every iteration of Monel's origin, that's the one thing that's never changed, is that Monel and Kal-El have always been family. Let me know what you guys think of Monel in the comment section below. Stick around and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more DC and Marvel origins. Thank you guys for the support. You guys can follow me on Twitter if you want to keep up with what we're going to be doing. And I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.